name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of oh, Are You Dying To Know? Because Trish is coming to I me. am. Hi guys. Hello. How are you? Hello, 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 hello. Today we are going to... Oh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to run you through a day in the life of a mortician. Oh, Just a we? general, like, really non-eventful day. Just a, a normal day. A normal day? Yep. Now yeah. there's a bit of noise in the background, guys. There's a building site next door and there's not much we can do about it. We're yeah. in displaced we're not in our studio because way too noisy there and it's a bit echoey in here so i apologize yeah. for that but if you bear with us we're going to run you through okay so yeah. what time do you get to work seven o'clock i get to work i'll check my computer and check out what uh, mortuary paperwork i have for the day to tell me the lovely deceased people that i need to prep for that day for the service in the next day or two so my little office go in there get all the paperwork sort through that paperwork collect my paperwork then I go out to another room where there's a big board on that board there's a list of names mm -hmm. and it tells me if they're in care or if they um, as in in care with you in care in the, the fridge tree. yeah right. into the fridge mm -hmm. yeah so that tells me whether they're in care or whether they're coming in that day or they're not clear from the hospitals or the coroners right okay have I got my loved ones that are going on services tomorrow? Right, and you've got to time prioritise things like viewings. Yeah, viewings, family dressings, um, the services, uh, any religious things that need you might to happen. have to have somebody prepped yeah. so they can go home for yeah. the night. Or yeah, that do, sort I need to, do I need to do basic preps? Do I need to do embalms? Have I got a reconstruction? What's, what's to be done for that day? So the beginning of the day it takes an hour or so just so I can work out who's where, what and when are they coming in and also are they due in and when is the service. Right, so once you've sorted that and you've worked out your priority, yep. and you get your first person. So what? No, I no. don't do oh, that she yet. doesn't get a first person yet. Not oh, yet. Okay. So I've checked that. Now I need to check the coffins have arrived. I need to check that and also I need to check if clothes have arrived to dress them in. Right. Because it's no good me getting a body out of the fridge, doing all that work because it's heavy work and then finding out I've got no clothes and no coffin to put them in and then have to put them back in the fridge to get them back out again mm. and it's, it's a lot of heavy work so we try to make it as smooth line as possible so I check coffins and I'll check clothes. And at that point you go back to the arranger and go I haven't got a coffin, yeah. I haven't got a clothes yeah. or are we waiting for something, yeah. were there any special requests, you've yeah. got a list of all that? Yeah, So if somebody wants all their jewellery put on or their jewellery yeah. taken off yeah. or yeah. you know a certain yeah. hairdo or whatever yeah. that comes in with all the paperwork it does and if i get right. photographs which i try and request photographs because it's easier then you can see how the hair and the makeup's done see. so that's my process and if i haven't got what i need then i'll prioritize what i have got and what i can get on with while i'm waiting for clothes to arrive or yeah. the coffin to arrive or the deceased to arrive that's on the way in with the transfer team that morning or right. that afternoon so that's the beginning of the morning, usually takes a little bit of a while, and then I'll don my gear and head into the mortuary. So that's my full PPE, all the gear, gum boots, my gown, my plastic gown, my mask, and my face shield, and my hair cover, and my gloves. I'm ready. Right. Yeah. So then what? Then what? Yes. <laughs> Check my paperwork again. Okay, so I'm getting Betty out. Betty's a little old lady that passed away a couple of days in the nursing home. She's got a service tomorrow. They want her dressed in this lovely little outfit that she had for bestest, because we have Sunday bestests. And she wants a little bit light makeup and her hair done like the photograph I've got. So, right, so that's pretty straightforward, so that's pretty easy thing to be doing. Yeah. So I get little So Betty you wouldn't out. have to aspirate Betty in that situation? I don't know till I get her out of the fridge, right. whether she's distended in the tomb or she needs any work. So then I find out when I get the person out of the fridge, oh, we need to do a cavity and balm because she's bloated or, or she's a very, you know, nothing untoward. Yeah. You know, looks like she just did when to sleep. So we do a... A wash, um, dress, the face prep. The We've got a video on that. I'm yep. going to link to that video. Yep. It just shows you a basic prep. Yep. Do all that, you know. Wash, face prep, dress. Well, nappy first, dress, hair and makeup. And then the, get Betty on the little lifting device and then lift her up and place her in the coffin. Make sure she's all comfortable. Make sure she looks really lovely 
and peaceful and ready for her family if they're viewing at the service. No, then Betty's in. Put the foot strap on because Betty's a little lady and we don't want her sliding down the coffin. Oh, coffin. she's got a foot strap. We seatbelt everybody in a coffin. I didn't know that. Yeah. I've been doing this for nearly two years and I didn't know that. Did we not mention that? Never you have never that. mentioned that. The seatbelt. There's a coffin seatbelt. Well, that's, that's what we make ourselves. So how do you make it? What do you do? I, I make them just out of uh, some cloths. Like a it, sheet ripped up or yeah, something? Like yeah, a sheet. Or sometimes I'll just make them out of bags. Right. You know, like your shopping bags that you yeah. get rid of. I'll cut the handles off and use them and staple them into the coffin and staple the foot. So it's like a it's like a stirrup. Well, hang on, hang on. Not staple the foot. Staple the... No, not the foot. <laughs> The, the uh, material that's right. holding the foot. So it's like putting your foot into a stirrup. Oh, okay, cool. So Interesting. Because the reason being is... It's like a sling underneath the feet. Well, that's right. So if little Betty, because she's tiny, she might slide down the bottom of the coffin yeah. in the hearse. You'll while. open her up and she's not there. Yeah, she's at the bottom, you know, and she's going, where's Betty gone? <laughs> she escaped. Damn so, that Betty, she keeps escaping. She keeps going out. So okay. yeah, you put it um, like if a foot strap on which is basically to secure so they don't slide because you could be in the hearse and you could be going over mm. bumps make sure they all look gorgeous and lovely and then once betty's all done she gets placed back in the fridge ready. with the lid off lid off why yeah, but with a modesty cloth yes. over the face that lid off because we just don't want any uh, condensation building up or anything in there plus another main reason is when we come the next day to do the service the funeral director and the assistants have to make sure they've got the correct body. Right, of course. Okay. They do. So it's yes. the correct body in the correct coffin. With the right paperwork. With the right paperwork. So they do it. Another check. So the name tag's checked. Remember, mm -hmm. we've shown you they have our name tag. That never gets taken off. Just like a hospital. Name tag's checked. It's Betty. She's got a service at 11 o'clock at such and such church. And we're all good. She's dressed in the clothes she's supposed to be. All good. And then we'll put the lid on. Right. And cool. then place flowers on the top if there's flowers, and then she leaves my care. So sometimes in a day you might have to do an imam. Yes. And how does that fit in with the normal workflow of people who have to be ready for viewings and services? Again, have to manage my day. Um, I will prioritise um, and say, oh, well, Betty's not out for another two days. I might do her later this afternoon while I do the embalm this morning because I need that embalm done straight away so the embalm can be done even if the embalm's not for a few weeks. Because the whole idea of an embalm is just to stop the decomposition yeah, it's in its tracks to stop where any, we are. Yeah, so, bacteria, microbes, anything, you know, because this person, one, might not be having a service for three weeks. So I need to preserve them yeah. ASAP and yeah. not leave them and leave them and leave them eventually yeah. embalm. Yeah. So they could be just there because they're not going for Plus, a few weeks. they look better if you embalm them sooner rather yeah. than later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And after I've done all my preps for the day, which goes along like that, same process. How long does it take per prep if they're just basic? So you have four old people that you have to do. Okay, so average about 40 minutes for okay. a basic. 40 minutes to an hour for a basic wash, dress, nothing needing doing. If you're starting to cavity aspirate and embalm, you're talking an extra 20 minutes or so, you know, embalming two to three a few hours. hours, embalming an autopsy body for seven hours, six hours. So what happens on a day like that if you've got an autopsy body that needs to be embalmed and it needs to be embalmed soon, but you've also got a couple of people that need to be prepped, do you set the embalm up and have it going in one part of the room and then I can do go that, yeah. To... I can have two tables set up where I'll do that, but sometimes I, I'll get a helper in. So and you're yeah. still supervised while you embalm, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So, so Chase is still doing her training for embalming. I am. So there'll always be Melissa there, who's my um, um, mentor. mentor. Yeah. So Melissa could be actually while I'm talking through my embalm, do the uh, basic preps while I do yeah. all of the embalming, which is how it works well. You know. Um, at the end of uh, all of my preps, I then finish for the day. Do you have a lunch break? Yeah, I'll have a break in between. Hey, yeah, sorry, have a lunch break. <laughs> I'm always worried about food. Yeah. You've got to eat, Tracy. Yeah, I do eat, don't worry. I eat, so have a break. At the end of my day, I will then disinfect the whole mortuary down. My instruments have been sitting, uh, clean all them down, um, put them out to air dry, and then I would clean my table. Table gets thoroughly cleaned down and disinfected. And then I'll bleach the floors. Mm -hmm. I love to bleach the floors. I like that one. Along with cleaning all the benches first as well. And then once I'm all done, I'll 
get rid of my plastic gown, which is disposed of, you know, thrown away, I don't need that one anymore. Take off my uh, PPE altogether in the correct way, <laughs> there's a correct way, and then leave the mortuary all nice and clean for the next day, but I still haven't finished my day. Right, so then what? So then I go back in the office after I've cleaned my hands, and then I do all the paperwork that I've done for the bodies today. So we have a system, because everything's on computer, mortuary preps. So the preps I've done, who it was, what I did, what I dressed them in, if I put jewellery on, if I return jewellery, if I put makeup on, if I embalmed. Everything. Everything gets recorded. Right, and why? Because we need it recorded for, say, say Betty had a ring and the family wanted it returned to be given to the family at the service to be returned. So we need to record that we have returned that yeah. in case the family come back and they've lost it and they said, you didn't give us the ring back. We can look through all of our records through yeah. the whole process to say, yes, we had a yellow colored ring and it had a blue stone in it and we returned it to you. So it's all recorded, everything's recorded for that. And also, just so we know what body preparation we've done, if the family have any questions. If the family want to come back and say, you know, can you just tell me what you actually did with Betty two months ago, we can say yes, we did this, she had a little tear in her arm, we I, I tread it and I put a bandage on, anything. We need to keep um, uh, records for a while, for a long time, so it, it's all digitally kept these days. And that will be where I finish my day, is at the computer, and I've done, I'll close the computer down and then I go home. Cool. All ready to go again the next day. And the next day and start the process again. Ah. Interesting. Well, thank you yeah. for that, Trace. Thank you, Annie, for that uh, request. And I uh, hope we didn't take too long and uh, ask for that one. Take care, guys. Send us your questions. questions. Yeah. yeah. Like, subscribe. And we will see you next time. Take care. Bye.